So you've decided to add solar to your metal roof. Good choice, but now comes the part that can be tricky, figuring out a plan for installing your array. There's a myriad of questions you'll need to answer, everything from how many solar panels are in your design to what kind of attachments you'll need. If pulling together all this information sounds daunting, we've got just the tool for you. Let's talk with S5's application engineer, Jesse Winternitz, to find out more about our solar calculator and how it can help you simplify the design process of your next solar project. So today we're going to talk a little bit about solar, but uh, instead of focusing on the install of actually being on the roof, let's focus on something else that is completely crucial, and that is the design. Um, if you're going to take a road trip, you're going to want to know where you're going, and the same thing kind of applies for adding a solar array to your roof. You really got to have stuff ready up front, or it's going to create a mess on the roof. T tell us a little bit about uh, what goes into the design of a solar array and why it's important. Absolutely. What makes our tool special, what makes our solar calculator special, is it pulls in the information about the roof and our clamp to seam testing before you even have your, your finalized design. Yeah. Being able to create a design with our tool while using our clamp to seam testing is, is so important. It's being able to generate something that you know you're gonna have enough attachment points uh, and you'll be able to see exactly how much force each of our clamps can hold on the roof before you even get everything finalized, it, it's so nice, right? It's, 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 the, it's the logical path when using and designing around our PV kit and our clamp to seam testing. So our calculator pulls that all together and, and makes it as simple as we as we can for you. Well, and obviously time is money and, 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 and for so many people, and in this case, you don't want to be bogged down with having to get so many different things from so many different areas where mm -hmm. it can be aggregated all in one place and take out the guesswork. Like you said, yes. we've done so much testing over the years, having a dependable attachment that you're going to be able to know it's going to handle your solar system and you're not going to be back up there in a few years trying to figure out what's going wrong. It's really nice to know that it, you're set and you're good to go at that point. Yep, absolutely. I mean, this is more than a design tool and that's really the bottom line is this is a engineering tool it, it it pulls in our testing it pulls in ASC 7 standards and we'll get more into it but it makes everything a one-stop shop absolutely so why don't we dive into it we'll get down to the brass tacks here and I'm gonna guess we're gonna start on s-5.com hey likely. you're you're guessing right uh, what do you know we're gonna start on s-5.com hopefully most of you are somewhat familiar if you don't have an account yet, you will need to create one. A sure. uh, free account, sure. it's pretty easy to set up. Just, you know, you'll need to set your username and password. Sure. But I'm just gonna go ahead and log in here. So just do that right there. All right, now you'll see we're logged in. Sure. So the quickest way to get to the solar calculator specifically is just right up in here on the header, you'll see this solar calculator button. All right. I'm just gonna click on that. All right, so now, now we're on this page here. If this is your first time using the solar calculator, uh, you're not going to have these existing projects down here. Um, but what you're going to do, you're just going to click on a create a new project. It'll bring you to this next page. Yeah. You'll get to see Patrick's smiling face hey, again. I know that guy. What do you know? <laughs> He's a great guy. Love him. A lot of helper videos and helper texts that are out every here too and stuff. This is just kind of a little introduction to it that if you're unfamiliar with this, we've, we, we'll hold your hand a little bit through mm -hmm. this if you need it. Yeah. You know, we, we want to give you an introduction right here and I'll show you later on once we get into the calculator itself. Uh, there's, there's an easy way to ask for help and get assistance if, if you need it. Down here, we're going to click on this button, take me to the solar calculator, and it's going to open up a new page here, uh, bring you to the, the solar calculator website. Yeah, this is kind of the beginning of the solar calculator proper at this point, right? Yes, uh, cool. now, we're, now we're here, we have arrived. So the first thing I'm going to point out, I'm not really going to dive into it, but on this menu over here, if you need to save a project, open an existing project, start over with a brand new project, you can do all that there. So. But for now, we're just going to stay on this page. This is set up to start a new project, which yeah. is exactly what we want. Um, you do have the option to switch to metric units if you're like myself and from Canada. Here in the US, we're going to call you out. You're the ones who want Imperial, so, but we'll do this demo in Imperial. <laughs> <laughs> from here, we're going to select our roof. You can do both a standing seam roof or alternatively an exposed fasten roof. An exposed fasten, that's going to cover trapezoidal and corrugated at that point, mm -hmm. right? So we've got a wide gamut of stuff that this calculator is going to work with. Yep, absolutely. All right. Yep, and if, and if you do have any, this is actually a good segue, if, if you have any questions about selecting what roof should I put into the calculator, because maybe 
you don't know what the manufacturer of your roof is. Maybe you don't even know what kind of standing seam it is. So many manufacturers have so many subtle variations in their panel profiles too, and getting the right thing is obviously crucial in this book. It's so important. It's, it's something S5 preaches. Uh, we really want to know as much information about the roof as we can so that we know what kind of holding strength our clamp is going to achieve on that roof. It's not good enough to say it's a standing seam so it gets X amount of holding strength. Uh, we need to be more specific. Yeah. So reach right. out to us, we'll help you out, but it really is so important. Can't emphasize that enough. But you'll see here, you got this little question mark. Click, go ahead and click on that. And there's some information. You can send a message to our support team. We'll get in contact with you. We'll help you out. So just a good tool to know it, that's there. And it is on the following sections of the calculator as well. Yeah, it can be found basically on every page that you're going to be visiting here. Quick help wherever you need it. Absolutely. So for this one though, we're going to stick with a standing seam. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. From here, we're going to click on the roof manufacturer. Uh, so for this one, we're going to select a fairly common profile. That's going to be a pretty common theme. We're actually going to just stay with sure. fairly standard inputs. Might not be specific to your project, but this is most of these inputs should sound fairly familiar to you. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on New Tech Machinery. And just going through there, I mean, you could see just, just a small sm snippet of all the panel manufacturers that we've worked with and stuff. We tried to be so thorough in knowing all that's going to be out there. So we can cover our bases for any of our customers you're going to be working with. Absolutely. Um, you know, we have hundreds of roofs tested, thousands of pull tests, different materials, different clamps, different seam folds types, you know, double fold yeah. versus single fold. And all of those are going to be accounted for. And you know, it, it can sound overwhelming as someone who's not super familiar with standing seams or our product line, but that's why we have a support team. That's why we have a dedicated support team to help you guys out so that you, we can help uh, smooth that process. I mean, let's be honest too. It's like, we're not a one size fits all company. We really do want to make sure that it is the right attachment for your roof. It seems pretty easy. Scroll through and find what you need. And if you don't know, we'll help you out. Absolutely. For the roof product here, this is where you're selecting the, the style of seam. Sure. We're going to select their one inch double fold, uh, SS100 double fold in this case. Uh, for the seam spacing, this is the, dif uh, the distance between the seams on the roof. We're going to select a 24 inch seam spacing. And that's pretty common, yeah? Relatively common, yeah. I mean, you know, you might see seam spacings all the way down to 12 inches. On the other end of things, you might see an, uh, an insulated metal panel that has a seam spacing, you know, 40 plus. But uh, this, this is going to be pretty standard okay, for great. small commercial or residential projects, absolutely. All right. From here for the S5 clamp, we're going to go ahead and select the E-mini. Uh, you'll see you do have the option to select the E-mini or the S5e. If you're not familiar with the difference, they're the exact same extrusion, they fit on the exact same roofs. Yeah. The E-mini is the slightly more cost-effective single set screw version of the clamp. In most solar applications when, where wind uplift is going to be your primary force that you need to design around, um, so, i.e. the forces and uplift, mm -hmm. uh, the mini clamp is often more than adequate when it comes to holding strength. If you have a job in Minnesota on a steep roof and you're dealing with these high snow loads, <laughs> sure. we might need to come back to it and address it. And you might be better off with a two set screw clamp because it can handle those parallel along the seam loads yeah. uh, better. But in this case, we're going to stick with the E-mini. The mini clamps in general are going to be more common on solar projects. Of course, and why not be cost effective if it's not going to affect your performance at all, right? I mean, we want to sell you the best clamp for, for your project. And that's why we have the mini clamp and the standard size clamp is sometimes you might need the standard size clamp. But when it comes to solar projects with our PV kit, if you're not dealing with snow loads, most likely you don't. Uh, roof materials, see we have this particular setup, this roof with this clamp tested in 24 gauge steel. So we're going to stick with that. Uh, once we have all that selected, you'll see some more information pop up here. These three inputs right here, they're relating to our factors of safety. These are the industry standard factors of safety. Um, you can adjust them if you want. You know, we would really only recommend that you increase your factor of safety as opposed <laughs> to decreasing it. Sure. Um, but you, there, you, know, you do have some design choices there. And you'll also see that it does pull our parallel and normal to seam testing. Yeah. Being a solar job where wind forces are going to be our primary force we're designing around, the normal to seam testing, the uplift testing of the clamp to seam connection is going to be the most important one and we'll illustrate that a little bit further on the line. Um, but it's nice to see right off the bat that there is testing. We can back this up with third party reports. Yeah. And you know, this is what an engineer or an HJ might want to see when we're working on an approval process. Yeah, I see it's really nice that it just automatically pulls you know, from our extensive load testing that we've done so there's no extra legwork for you to do on that part. Like we said earlier on, one stop shop, we want to pull in all the tools together into one calculator. Why not? And you'll see here, you know, you got a little picture of your clamp, so that's nice. And we're just going to move on to the next page here. 
So on this next page here, this is where you're going to enter your site-specific data. Okay. So we're just going to, we're not going to dive into this too deep, but we're going to go through all the inputs here. So the first thing we're going to do is enter the address. So now that we have our address in here, uh, you'll see that it pulls up a picture of your map. In this particular case, and this is relatively common, especially in commercial jobs, the little red marker that the address is associated with yep. isn't actually on a building. The building that we're going to be putting the solar on or designing the solar for is actually this building right down here, a small commercial building. But that's not a problem. When we get to the next page, I'll show you how you can just drag your, your screen over. No issue there. All right. The next thing is we're going to enter a project name. For this example, we're just going to keep it really simple. Let's just say uh, demo for a video. And then we're going to come down here, and now we're going to look at the site-specific inputs. Sure. And as you'll see, these site-specific inputs are required for ASC7, which is the standard this calculator is designed around and what it's engineered to. Most of you who have experience with solar design are probably very familiar. This is going to be the, your most standard code that you're designing around here, okay. at least domestically, internationally as well, though. So we're going to stick with ASC710, which is the default. On risk category, let's bump it up to risk category two. Being a small commercial project, that's probably a little bit more realistic for the site itself. Sometimes, based on your site, uh, the wind speed or the ground snow load might be auto-generated. In this case, being that the project's in Colorado, it's a little bit more site-specific and um, it's not uh, readily available. Um, so, but we're gonna enter a wind speed of 130 miles per hour. Ground snow load, let's go ahead and enter a ground snow load of 30 PSF. Uh, and we'll leave the seismic as it is. Uh, there is a, a URL you'll see here. Uh, this is a good website to go to to pull this information for your specific site. Great resource. There's other resources that are similar. Uh, this is a great one though. From here, we're going to jump down to exposure category and exposure factor. You'll see here actually that when I hover my mouse over those inputs, there is a pop-up for help. It might help you determine what you need to select, but if you're, if you're not sure, reach out to us, we'll help you out. Absolutely. It, it, you know, the answer might be that you, you know, need to get this from the county or from an architect, but we can help you make a educated decision on where to proceed if you don't have your, your answers in front some of, of these, you. Some of these concepts may be something that, you know, a lot of people aren't familiar with, so it's great that explaining them pretty simply and stuff, some of them you can kind of ascertain what you need right away. As always, we're here for you and stuff, don't hesitate to reach out. So exposure category, uh, we're going to enter C, which is uh, a flat and open, uh, quote unquote, exposure category. The alternative is being closely spaced or near the you know, open water. Sure. This building is neither, so we're going with C. Exposure factor, uh, we're going to go uh, fully exposed, which is the most conservative input you can put there. Helps you play it safe. If, yep. If you're not sure between you know, one input versus another, err on the side of caution when it comes to engineering something that is so important. Um, but for here, we should be good, so let's go on to the next page. And you'll see, you know, we're zoomed in on our little marker, like I said earlier. Yep. So the first thing we're going to do is zoom out. And this is a little bit more difficult to do on a laptop, just because I don't have my mouse with me at the moment. But I'm just going to come over here and zoom in on the building. Get that kind of nice and centered. So now that we're here, we, ha we have our building. We kind of have an idea. We're going to be putting solar on this south-facing roof here. Mm -hmm. If we wanted to put solar on multiple roofs, we absolutely could do so. We're sure. not going to do so on this demo. But I'll, I'll talk to it a little bit more. A lot of the steps will be the same if you were to do more than one roof anyway, so this yes. will kind of get you off and running. Yes, absolutely. So the first thing you're going to want to do before you even draw the roof is select our solar module. Okay. In this case, I'm going to leave it as the default module, but you can see you can open up the manufacturer list, scroll through, find your manufacturer, and then for any manufacturer, there's going to be uh, a list of solar modules. Yeah. Wow. So you can select the one that you need, and the most important thing is that the calculator is then going to know you know, what's your wattage, what's the weight of the module, the size of the module, and it's going to be able to use that to effectively design your array. We want to be as exact as we can here, um, really with everything, but not something to overlook here when it's the module. Yeah. If your module is not in the list, maybe it's a new module, maybe it's an obscure module, maybe it's just being sold under a different name and you don't know what the original name was, mm -hmm. you can enter a user-defined module. I'm not going to do it right now, but I'll open this up so we can take a look at it. Um, very straightforward. You can enter a name of your module, the dimensions of the module, the power, the weight, um, and you'll be creating a new module in the database. Sure. So you can use whatever module you want to use. All right, wow. So let me go ahead and close that. Um, like I said, we're just going to leave it at the default. 
So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to draw the roof. So like I said earlier, we're going to be putting the solar on the south facing roof here. Yeah. So let me zoom in a little bit just to get as much of it in my screen as I can. And we can click on this line tool. And what this tool is going to want me to do is draw the outline of the roof. You don't want to just do the outline of where you want to put the solar because that'll mess up where the wind zones are on the roof. Course, yeah. You really want to do the, in well, you really need to do, let me not mince words. For safety. The <laughs> yes, the entire roof. So All right. let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to, just coming around the roof here. I'm uh, not clicking and dragging. I'm just clicking on each of the uh, points that I want to create a change of direction yeah. in my line. Don't worry about getting it too exact. Obviously, we want it to be as exact as possible. Um, but we're going to walk through a few steps here. And I'll, like, I keep, I keep saying this is my phrase of the day. But we're going to come back to it. We're going to illustrate how you can adjust as needed sure. once we have a little bit more information to work with. So from here, we have our roof drawn. You'll see it popped up on this right-hand side with this roof one. If you wanted to rename this, you absolutely could. For now, roof one suits our needs. Mm -hmm. Roof slope, we're going to enter a slope. For this roof, let's go with a 312 pitch. Of course, yeah. Pretty common. Yep, pretty standard for these uh, small commercial projects. You know, you might be on a massive project where you got a half 12 pitch. You might be on a residential roof where it's much steeper. Yep. Um, but this is going to be kind of your, your middle, your average. All right, great. <laughs> your most common. Maybe <laughs> average isn't the right word. From here, let's enter your height. Uh, let's enter a roof height of 20 feet. And then we're going to enter a setback. So you have a couple different options here. You can do a setback just from every single roof edge and keep it consistent. Sure. So let, let's start by doing that. Let's enter a, a roof setback of 36 inches. Three feet you know, fairly common. It'll depend on where the project's at, exactly what you want, how much access you want from certain edges of your roof. Maybe something like a fire code might apply in your area yep. and you need to change certain setbacks. And let's actually illustrate that here. So this is a button right here, setback by roof edge. We're going to click on that. So you'll see now we have this, this new page where we have each roof edge called out with a specific number. Okay. So if we look at this diagram, and it's a, it gets a little bit darker, but you'll see that the ridge is marked with the 2, mm -hmm. and the eaves are marked with a 9 and a 4. So on those particular ones, we're going to adjust our setback. We're going to increase it. We're going to make it 60 inches. And we're going to do that on all three of those particular edges. And you can get as extensive or simple as you want with this. You don't need to enter a setback at all. You can keep your setback the same on every single roof sure. edge. But maybe you want to get more complex. Maybe you want to get closer to the dormer. Maybe you want to increase the setback on one of your rakes for yeah. walking up and down the roof. It just really depends on what works best for you, what, is, what meets code in your yeah. area, um, and how you want to design your array. You can be as broad or as granular as you want, basically, on your <laughs> options for your array here. Yep. Awesome. It's up to you. So we're going to apply this, and you'll see that after I do so, the setbacks are going to be moved up on both on, at the eave and moved down uh, from the ridge. Mm -hmm. But now we have that all entered. Unfortunately, that's all for today, but there's still lots more to come. Next time, we'll show you how to set wind zones, generate a design, and get that bill of materials. How many panels will fit into your array? How much power can your system produce? What type of attachments will you need and how many are required? How much weight will it add to your roof? All those questions and more can be found in the Bill of Materials. Hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss part two. And if you got any questions or requests for upcoming video topics, just drop us a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. See you next time.